Good evening and welcome to ATV News. My name is Shalama Lawson. On today's bulletin, questions are being raised over child labour in Zimbabwe. Kese women embark on self-help projects. A drama thrills crowds with his skills. The basketball league resumes next week. And sports volunteers jet into Zimbabwe. Some children in Bulawayo have resorted to cleaning cars to survive and help feed their families in a move that is raising a lot of questions over child labour in Zimbabwe. Eunice Ferrezai reports. Poverty is pushing a number of children in Bulawayo to do all sorts of jobs such as washing cars just to help support their families. With schools closed, many of the children are washing cars in the busy streets of Bulawayo, sparking debate about child labor. ATV caught up with some of the children at different spots in the city doing what they can to earn money. I'm proud. 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 I'm Another child, Prince Kumbo, said he was helping his parents who are sick with money for rentals, food, and school fees. The school fees. Some motorists blamed parents for not being responsible and said tossing children onto the street exposed them to drugs, crime and sexual abuse. They just hang around. At least but exposed I blame the parents. Because every time when they are about to knock off, they buy food for the parents. So they are forcing those kids to go on the street to find money to fend themselves. According to the 2010 United Nations Children's Fund UNICEF report, 13% of Zimbabwean children are engaged in child labor, with International Labor Organization ILO says has negative effects on children and also interferes with schooling. Reported for ATV in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. Women in Kezi district are taking practical steps to improve their livelihoods through self-help initiatives. Chris Pintavora reports. More than 300 women from Matopo district of Kezi in Matabelen South province have embarked on self-help projects to fight hunger and poverty. ATV caught up with women in this drought-prone district who were a bit about their projects. So I tell them money every month, every month. In Maliana, they will get some. Is is a ten percent. In Maliana, they charge five dollars, five dollars in Nyanga. So as we will get, we are thirty twenty dollars. We are going to use that ten percent. So as we will get, we will get Nyanga. So ten Maliana is in budget. So I'm a project in Kumanga. I'm a V S and L. Or Chukuti village lendings and savings. Go Chukuti Ama project Lawas Wenza Ranji. Go village Lia Lia Kotanalibe Momama. Go Sugalanji inani ku five fix ya pezu. Kusia Mutin Lalizuana Nanjani. Njalo Lishes in Jan Kena Leonda. Their club is called Vusanani Project and the women have vegetable gardens, tree nurseries, and run a revolving fund. Some of the women cycle more than 30 kilometers to monitor progress of their projects. BD village headmen appealed for more assistance to help improve the livelihoods 
of people in his area. Bid women in Kesi are determined to fight hunger and poverty in their community and with more support they can improve their household food security. Reporting for ATV, I'm Chris Pentabra in Kesi, Zimbabwe. For many people, playing one or two drums is possible, but to play six drums at the same time is another question. Jairo Saonyama gives us more about a man with rare drum beating skills. A gifted and talented drum player thrilled scores of people at the Murewa Culture Center by playing six drums simultaneously. The man Farai Jambwa, who is also a drummer with traditional dance group Ngoma Zepasi, proved he is a skilled drummer during the just-ended Mbende festival held in Mureo. Jambra made the drums with the help from his fans. Listeners say Jamba's drum playing skills have taken Jerusalem to a higher level. He, he does his work very well, you know, he uh, would want to really acknowledge and we are really proud to, to have a drummer like that. He has moved on from playing with two drums now to play with five drums. However, fellow drummers say despite the skills, Jamba was losing the plot as far as band music is concerned. I don't go. Despite criticism from fellow drummers, Jambwa, who is also a marimba and bira player, said he is working on beating 12 drums at the same time. And the notary Reporting for ATV in Murewa, Zimbabwe. Basketball fans in Bulawayo and surrounding areas are in for a treat as the Southern Region League is set to start in a week's time. Melody Muguti reports. The Southern Region Basketball League will kick off next week amid efforts to strengthen its structures and sponsorship. The Secretary of the Southern Region Basketball Association, Joe Mujuru, is upbeat after the holding of their annual general meeting. After the, the AGM clubs have definitely taken a more professional outlook, they want uh, the league to get bigger. Uh, they want uh, we resolve also club must have uh, structures in place uh, that make it uh, more viable for them to take part in this league and so that they can survive for the whole season. He also appealed for funding from the corporate world to support the league. The resolutions were taken at the AGM to see how best we can uh, involve uh, corporates, how best we can market the sport, how best we can uh, uh, look expand the sport in terms of marketing uh, and growth. Oilers basketball club coach is confident about his team this season. Yeah, we should be able to, to win you know, some of the games. There is a new team that has come in. You know, some teams have come back from Harare and see the, uh, the depth of Harare basketball. So they've actually recycled players into one team, which would be quite exciting to see. It's going to make a change in the Southern League basketball. The Southern Region Basketball League is still open to new clubs that would want to join its ranks. Reporting for ATV in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. Four sports volunteers have arrived in Zimbabwe to share their sporting experiences with locals under a program coordinated by a sports umbrella body. Robert Tafumane gives us more. 
four sports volunteers from Norway and Kenya are in the country under the Sports and Recreation Commission Cultural Exchange Program. ATV spoke to the volunteers who promised to impact sporting skills to locals while at the same time learning from them. I'll bring a little bit of the, a taste of Norway to, to Zimbabwe and I'll take a bit of Zimbabwe with me when I'm going home. Rebecca Quindi from Kenya committed the exchange program for affording her the chance to learn more about sporting life in Zimbabwe. What can I say else about them? They are good. They are actually good. I've also liked the capital city, uh, the new language that is Shona, and uh, what else? The ways of people, new culture, you can say. Vega of Norway is ecstatic about his stay in the country and said he was looking forward to sharing experiences with people in the Midlands province where you'll be based. Uh, I expect to learn a lot about your culture, uh, new music, new ways of life, new food, yeah, everything and normal African do during the year. A cow from nowhere will be based in Harare and promised to treat uh, soccer lovers in the country. Uh, from me, they're going to expect a Norwegian soccer coach that uh, enjoys soccer very much and uh, it's going to yeah, just have fun with soccer. <laughs> in return, the Sports and Recreation Commission has already sent four youths from Zimbabwe to Norway under the cultural exchange program. The Youth Sport Exchange Program is an initiative that involves four countries, namely Uganda, Norway, Zambia and Zimbabwe. Under the program, volunteers go for attachment in the partnering countries for a period ranging from 6 to 12 months. Reporting for ATV, Robert Afmane, Arare, Zimbabwe. Thank you for joining us. Good night.